Hello guys. Always on YouTube trying to figure stuff out for my van. Finally figured something out on these turbo slash actuators. I feel like I have to give back. Uh, I had a problem. Turbo blew up. Uh, got a 2006 Dodge Sprinter 3500. Bought it with 200,000 miles, 380,000 miles. Turbo explodes. Not a big deal. Barely put any money into it. This thing runs like a champ. Um, but there was a what happened was after it exploded wanted to get my van back up and running real fast so I ordered a turbo on eBay because it's the first one I saw especially at the price got the turbo got everything up and running uh, put the turbo on first thing first ordered the turbo got it in right away uh, they got it the next day to me great guys over there I'll tell you who they are attach a link uh, even saw a review where it says the turbo doesn't fit but uh, when I got it uh, called my mechanic friend he says it fits the only problem we had was the actuator he says the actuator arm trying to reach down in there was too long on the original actuator from the Garrett turbo well that's what he thought so he says I think you got the wrong actuator because you got one of these cheap GT 2256V turbos which might have a different size actuator so I went online, found of course on eBay, uh, GT2256V actuator, ordered it right away, brings it in, he says it's a little bit better, he goes, the original Garrett was overextended, it was sticking out farther than it needed to be, it was sticking it past the wastegate arm. So, uh, so when he got the new one, he says, new one's pretty close, it's a little tight, but he got it to fit. Put it on, says your car is ready, jump in it, drive about five, six miles, boom, limp mode doesn't doesn't do anything brought it back to him he says I don't know maybe because all the oil that blew into it when the turbo blew up you might have had to change the sensor so came over here had changed the upper hose last year because there was a crack underneath here a crack underneath here which just a crack you couldn't see unless you squeezed it when you squeezed it then it would let out the air and it would put it in limp mode last year changed just the upper tube and I had the whole bracket for everything else I decided to put the bracket in the lower tube and change all the sensors, the boost sensor, pressure sensor, pressure temperature sensor, all that stuff. Even change the resonator box to a bypass. The resonator box is back underneath here to a bypass pipe and just in case the resonator is bad. So did all that stuff, same thing, limp mode, code P0299, getting frustrated. So I started thinking, thinking uh, maybe maybe it's a exhaust system because all the oil blew through the back so i changed the catalytic converter change exhaust same thing no problem i said okay i give up took it to the dodge dealer they had a specialist turbo diesel guy there get there he says they did a smoke test tested everything tubes and everything intercooler is fine charged me 200 bucks for that says you need a new turbo uh the turbo you got is bad i said how can it be bad it's brand new he says it's bad okay i asked him how much 5,500 to change at that point I said at 5,500 I go find me another van but then I got home and uh, started looking around I said it's got to be something different it's got to be something simple so went and looked underneath saw the seal on the resonator pipe was sticking out so I said oh it's that so I ordered a new resonator put it on boom went a little bit further still gets limp mode I always went limp mode when we're going up a hill never could make it past so many miles per hour, 50, 60 would always go in limp mode. I said, okay, let me call these turbo guys, complain, saying, hey man, everything's throwing up, code P0299, I need another turbo. They were happily sent me another turbo, which was great. Put it on, boom, same thing, limp mode. Only makes it, this time I went a little bit further, or this time I was able to go 70 miles per hour, and I was about to give up, I didn't know what else to do. Finally, I just said, you know what reset it let's try it again got a new code p0243 I said what the hell now the actuary is bad I said how can it be how can I have that kind of luck to have a bad turbo and then a bad actuator underneath there at the same time especially so I said it's got to be something simple so I said screw this I went and took the link off right here threw the arm to the side to see if the actuators work so I told uh, I had another guy with me I said start the van See if it, see if the actuator moves. Actuator arm was sitting against here on a, on a heat shield or whatever shield here. 
And when I turned it on, it was moving up and down. Boom, boom, boom. I said, oh, okay. I said, you know what, let me check the wastegate. Open and close the wastegate. Heard the engine bog down, bog, you know, start revving a little higher. I said, okay, everything seems to work. Okay, shut it off. I don't know what it is. I don't think it's actuated. I don't think it's this. I don't know what the hell it is. It's got to be something simple. After he shut it off, I tried putting the arm back on, and now the arm was it was it was lower than it was in the first place. So it tells me I had to clock the turbo, and the, the, I called the turbo guys, and they told me I had to clock the turbo, but they kept saying clock the backside. When I clocked the backside, which this might be the backside, then nobody meant and didn't do anything. So now there's some screws here. You can actually clock the turbo. There's five screws here in the back of this in the cold side where you can actually spin the turbo. So what I did is I just left it where it was, put a pipe against here, banged the pipe until it got to the point where the arm lined up with the wastegate perfectly. Put it on, boom. Car runs perfectly fine. 5,000 miles later, $1,500 in practice of changing sensors, tubes, exhaust. End up to be that uh, just needed to adjust the actuator with the turbo. But we did that even on a bench, which was a bad idea because when when you're doing it on a bench, you don't know where the home position is for the actuator. So the best thing to do is probably change your turbo, change your actuator, leave the arm off to the side, rev the engine a couple times, let it rub up in here, up and down here a couple times, let it idle, shut it off, and that'll probably be the home position. Then you can actually adjust the turbo. So I had to loosen these five screws, five or six screws. There's one underneath that was really hard to get to. But once I loosened them, I put a pipe up against here. As you can see, it actually chipped it away. Probably should have got a wood block or something, beat it down, spun it, clocked it to where the arm lined up perfectly, put it on, put the pin back on, boom, car runs perfectly fine. So to say that uh, you have to buy the turbo with the actuator is false, because you could probably adjust it, but the best thing to do, if you're gonna adjust it, put it on, don't put the arm on, start the car, rev it up a couple times, let it move, idle it, shut it off, put it back on, and then uh, you should be in the home position and you should be fine, But so far, I have I put on 5,000 miles with no problem. Even scratched up the crap out of my arm and the back of the shield, trying to get in there to loosen it up. So maybe have someone hold this, maybe have someone hold the shield back because the shield will cut you up pretty good too. So either way, hope this helps somebody. And uh, if there's any questions, I'll try to reply to them as soon as I can. Thanks guys, and thanks for all the help out there for all the people who've always posted videos. So hopefully this helps somebody out.